Once upon a time, in a tedious little town, was a tedious little office, and in that tedious little office worked a tedious little man. His name was Arthur, Arthur Pumis. Now, Arthur Pumis had a secret, but it wasn't a very secret secret. In fact, it was one of the least secret secrets that there have ever been in the history of office secrets, because in this office worked a young lady by the name of Beryl Forbes Juggs. So I said to him, Oi, oi, Savaloy, tits first, I'm no slut. Come in, can be such bastards. And Arthur, unsecretly, fancied Beryl Forbes Juggs something rotten. Oh, I don't know, I'll fancy that. Beryl Forbes jug, something rotten. Unfortunately for Arthur, Cupid's aim was well off. Beryl's feelings were not mutual. She thought he was a twat. That Arthur Pum is such a twat. Mm. Who's Arthur Pum is? That twat. Oh, he is such a knob. Mm. Arthur had fancied Beryl for sheer yonks and just couldn't get her to take any notice of him. I just can't get her to take any notice of me. Well, Arthur, why don't you do something to draw her attention? Why don't you make something? Make something. Make something. That'd impress her. Do you really think so? Yeah. Those love inventions. Well-known fact. I guarantee that if you make something really cool, her knickers will be off quicker than a frog in a sock. A frog? In a sock. I assure you, it's very fast. Yes, of course. A sock. So Arthur embarked upon a quest to invent something to prove himself worthy of the beautiful Beryl Forbes Jugs. Day after day and long into the night he toiled with a will hitherto unknown in his rather pathetic life. This is the one, Arthur. Trust me. Have faith, Arthur. Have faith. Here she comes. She's coming. Bloody hell is that? You're such a turd. You knob. Arthur, don't worry, mate. Right idea, wrong invention, that's all. Don't give up. Arthur? Arthur? But our hero wasn't going to give up. His overactive glands weren't going to take no for an answer. So once more, Arthur toiled and slaved, slaved and toiled, single-mindedly working on creating his own personal vaginal lodestone. Oh, God. This is the one, Arthur. Have faith, it's gonna work. It's wonderful, just believe it. Shit, she's coming. However, Beryl's thoughts were not the same. Arthur, you really are a twat. <sighs> you utter knob. Arthur, mate, don't give up. I would, but you shouldn't. You've got to think of something more cool. You know, something wicked, mega, you know, magic. God, you know, when she looks at me like that, I wish I could just fly. Why? Fire! 
fired with enthusiasm, Arthur once again took out his tools and banged away long and hard into the night, neither stopping for food nor sleep, until he had created something so wonderfully new and incredible, something straight out of legend. This time, Arthur had hit the nail on the head. So anyway, have you seen that new girl? The bottle blonde? Mm. Oh. Exactly. Minger. I know. For this time, Arthur had made an amazing, unbelievable, gravity-defying pair of... Wings! Arthur! Wings! My fantasy! And Beryl Forbes' jugs had always secretly had a fantasy about flying and thought she could really fall in love with a man with a pair of wings like that. I could fall in love with a man with a pair of wings like that. Oh, no! Ding dong! It would be a great honour, my lady. It would be a great honour, my lady, if you would accompany me outside where I shall demonstrate my amazing wings for you. <laughs> I would be honoured. Flipping neck. I conquer the skies for you, my lady. <laughs> and so saying, Arthur Pumice spread his amazing wings and stepped out into the air. <laughs> I now fancy him. Look at those wings. He's mine. You must be joking. He's mine. I'm bloody gagging for it. I fancy him more. <laughs> but I've fancied him for ages. But he fancies me. So Arthur, bursting with pride, thrilled and amazed his captivated audience with loops, tail slides, immobile turns, and barrel rolls. Arthur, watch out for that plane! The propeller! <coughs> there, there, Beryl. I'll build you some wings if you want. Max, would you? That's disgusting. So poor old Arthur succeeded in impressing the love of his life, but at the ultimate price. So it only goes to show birds aren't worth it. And so, apart from Arthur, they all lived happily ever after. For a bit, anyway. Max. Come to bed. My skirt's so tight, I'm feeling so hot. Max. Shut it, I'm playing Tomb Raider. Come on, I'll suck your big toes. Ah, sodger, you twat. <laughs> <laughs>